Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is your boy Ichabod Slice reporting from the California Delta. We are out here on the watercraft trying to biologize the sweet examples of nature before us. <laughs> Welcome to yet again another episode of Biologizing with your host, myself, Ichabod Slice. Uh, I'm starting to enjoy this YouTube stuff. It's starting to get real fun, like just being out places, talking to yourself. But yeah, uh, right now I'm in the California Delta, uh, which is a region in the state of California where two major river systems converge, the San Joaquin River and the Sacramento River. They also converge with another body of water, which is the Pacific Ocean, as it pushes its way in through the San Francisco Bay. Uh, eventually leading up to this point where the two rivers and the ocean water uh, pretty much converge. And as you can imagine, those two large rivers are bringing in a lot of energy, uh, a lot of nutrients uh, together in a certain spot. And then together with the ocean bringing its share of nutrients, you can imagine the productivity that occurs in this area. And that has been occurring uh, for millions of years. Uh, this this delta was was historically, uh, natural history wise, uh, a giant ass wetland, like like the largest wetland that you can imagine on the west coast. I mean, since then it's been you know levied up, heavily engineered. There was a ship channel that was cut through to to make it all the way to Sacramento just so they could ship rice. Yet the ecosystem here seems to be uh, somewhat thriving still even though there's a whole basket full of introduced species that have basically established themselves out here um i don't know it, it, naturally and biologically you know it's it's still pretty productive like you got these forster sterns right here stern of forster eye you can see them you know they're they're picking off something some some food source off the surface of the water forster's turns caradria for me so they're related to goals but you know they're a specific taxa that they're uh, relatively acrobatic flyers, um, wings that are like nice, long and pointy, suited for oceanic travel. And they're, they're eating something off the surface of the water right now, and uh, I'm about to investigate what it is. Alright, All right, so I think I know what they're eating. This is actually the exuvium uh, from the pupae of, of a dipterin, of a larval dipterin in the family Chironomidae, or the family of, of midges, um, you know. That's what they, they're commonly known as, is, is midges. Uh, this is the exuvium, so this is the leftover molt uh, from when the uh, the larval chironomid pupated, and uh, now it has become an adult. And I'm seeing, I don't know if you can see those flying in the sky right there, but those are the adults. And I assume that those birds, that these foresters turns out here, are uh, picking off the the pupae that haven't fully emerged. So this is an example of how uh, how the delta produces. I mean, you got chironomids, which is a dipterin. Uh, you don't really find diptera out in the ocean or anything like that, so they're somewhat dependent on fresh water. But uh, you have these forces terns, which are, are basically a marine bird, uh, but you can find them in lakes and stuff like that. But anyway, they, they know this place produces chironomids. That this, this water system, this aquatic ecosystem right here um, has periodic chironomid adult blooms and uh, these forces turns are, are just taking advantage of that all right so i'm pulled over uh, at this little vegetated um bank here and i thought i should just talk about some of the vegetation that can be found out here in the california delta so the first thing that you obviously see in front of me right here is this plant uh this is a uh, shinoplectus the genus shinoplectus in the family cyperaceae family of cyperuses uh, which uh, the whole family is pretty much known uh, to have like many, many uh, aquatic plants, plants that are adapted to uh, aquatic ecosystems or emergent vegetation. So they root in, uh, uh, the roots are uh, rooted into the sediment uh, underwater and then the leaves and stalks and, uh, will emerge out of the water. And uh, that's where most of the photosynthesis occurs. So yeah, Shinoplectus, one of the very few native plants left, but there, there's plenty of this around. Like Shinoplectus, the genus, I believe can be found pretty much worldwide. I, I believe there's many species of these. And this is one of the classic wetland plants that you're gonna find in freshwater and brackish water ecosystems. The, the Delta being, well, where I'm at in the Delta being uh, relatively uh, fresh, more, more freshwater influence than saltwater. 
Um, these do just fine here, but you'll find these uh, closer and closer you get to the ocean too, not just down here deep in the delta. They're not marine though. You won't find them in marine ecosystem. They can't handle the salt tolerance. Anyway, so another one that I saw where is, it? is this right here. Now, I believe uh, the common name for this is Brazilian Elodia. So the real scientific name is Egeria densa. Um, and I think that's what it is. Uh, there's like three different plant species that can be found in the Delta. Two of them introduced, one of them native, and they all look very, very similar. So the reason why I think this is Brazilian Elodia and not the other genus, uh, the genus called Hydrilla, which is also very common in the Delta, is because on the leaves of Hydrilla, they're known to have a spike on the on the vein on the underside of the leaves these don't seem to have it and the margins of the leaves on this uh, seem pretty smooth as opposed to uh, hydrilla which has um, kind of tooth margins on the leaves uh, nonetheless it's introduced and it does well out here but probably because it doesn't have uh, you know natural predators or natural herbivores that might feed on this wherever it's from the same case with hydrilla and because it doesn't have that herbivorous pressure out here uh, that the, it tends to outcompete the native species um, which probably have natural herbivores that feed on it and those herbivores that feed on the native one don't like to feed on this so that favors survival of this species and the hydrilla that can be found out here but yeah ageria adensa, also known as Brazilian Elodia, common aquatic, fully aquatic plant. All right, and then we got this one right here. I believe this is Myriophyllum spicatum. It could also be this other one, Myriophyllum uh, aquaticum. But I don't know. Uh, based on the pictures that I've seen, this this it looks like spicatum. It's a uh, it's a genus that's uh, native to to Africa, Eurasia, and you know Europe. Um, the family is Halo, Halo Garaci, I believe. The, that family can be found worldwide. But a lot of members in those families uh, are, are very herbaceous uh, aquatic plants. Again, this one is introduced here to the California Delta as well. And again, it also outcompetes other native weeds. To be honest, we're probably not going to see any native aquatic weeds uh, on this trip. I think the common name of this is called water milfoil. But yeah, you know, just another introduced aquatic plant here in the California Delta. All right, here we go. Last plant I'm going to talk about, I promise. Uh, right here we have a member in the family, Pontederiaceae. This is Icornia chrysippes, better known as the infamous water hyacinth. Uh, introduced from Brazil, or from the Amazon, I should say. And as you can see, uh, you know, it does pretty well out here. And it's not just introduced to the California Delta. This thing is also introduced to like the Mississippi Delta, the Louisiana Delta, the Gulf of Mexico, all the all the freshwater, large riverine freshwater systems that exit into the ocean. Like these things are everywhere. I think these were introduced, uh, you know, through the um, the horticultural trade or whatever it's called, you know, people that like, you know, like collecting plants. These are a common plant used in, uh, you know, aquatic uh, landscaping and everything. Uh, but it, but it's pretty bad. It's got it's got these like uh, I don't know like silicate particles in here that don't make it too tasty for any herbivore to eat. So they got that going for them, um, and they're just really good at proliferating, as you can see here. They probably don't have any natural herbivores to keep their populations in check, and you know the delta system out here has a climate and ecology that basically suits this species biology and causes them to do well out here. And you can see that they create these giant mats. They can they can create mats that can be so bad they can clog up, you know, shipping channels and, and, and boat marinas and all that. They're just like overall just a pain in the ass to, to get rid of. They, they, you know, governments do put money into taking these things out of waterways because you know, you need to keep the waterways clear. So huge pain in the ass. And you see they got these aquatic roots right here, these root system, you see those root hairs. You know, greatly adapted to, to to taking water out of its aquatic ecosystem that it lives in. You know, it's got these uh, very porous, uh, porous parenchyma in its tissues. The parenchyma is, is like the inner flesh tissue of a plant. It's very por porous, very airy, which, you know, allows them to float. It's uh, It's got different forms of morphology on its body. You can see it has, you know, it's got these flat 
leaf like structures so it can you know have a lot of surface area to capture that sun energy so it can photosynthesize and not to mention that it also has photosynthetic stems pretty much all of the plant is photosynthetic you know so it's got a lot going for it it's living in a great place here you know um it lives it lives in this delta system where there's a lot of nutrients that pour into here from these from the two major river systems that empty out into the delta so it's got a lot of nitrogen you know for its dna and for for photosynth for its dna and its in uh biological respiration processes that all life does yeah it's this is just this is just a good area you know this is just a good area for this species you know uh, and it makes these big mats uh, which actually provide, uh, you know, shelter for many fish species. They'll, they'll live under this. Uh, unfortunately, many of those fish species are introduced as well, like uh, the largemouth bass, Micropterus salmoides. There's probably a bunch of them living underneath here right now. But yeah, there you go. Icornia, Chrysippes, the infamous water hyacinth, just, you know, taking over the delta if left unchecked. Mixes well in with the trash, too. All right, look at that. All right, right here we got phylum, arthropoda, class crustacea. These guys are in the genus Gammarus, I believe. And I think this is Gammarus diberi, one of the infamous arthropod species that have been introduced here in the California Delta. I believe they were introduced here uh, via ballast tanks on ships. If you don't know what ballast tanks are, go look that up. I don't feel like explaining it. Anyway, so yeah, these were introduced here and uh, they've, they've, man, they've, they've pretty much like overtaken every single aquatic niche here in the Delta system. They're a crustacean, you know, uh, an amphipod. Most amphipods are aquatic too, although there are some terrestrial ones. But yeah, these things are more related to, uh, to like shrimp than they are, you know, spiders and stuff. And uh, I don't know if you can see that movement there, how it's just like kind of flinging itself around using the posterior portions of its body to to kind of just like fling itself around. I think that's called the, um, what is that called? Yeah, I forgot, I forgot what that, what that movement is called. There's a scientific term for it. Anyway, so there are some insects that have that maneuverability. If you notice shrimp, the way they move, they move in the same way, except they, they can flick quicker. But there are some insects out there like, like springtails that, that still have that, 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 muscle movement in their body um these guys use it to propel themselves through the water obviously um but like you know terrestrial insects like springtails and and terrestrial amphipods use it to to get away from you know would-be predators and everything but obviously in most of the insects that that type of body movement kind of just like phased out uh, kind of you know phased out evolutionarily they didn't really need it because you know they they evolved wings but uh, but yeah, that that little movement right there. But that's kind of like a biological behavior um, that can be seen in a lot of crustaceans. And uh, there's some evidence that the the insects have had that as well early in their evolution. You know, scientists are relatively unsure how these guys contribute to the food web. I'm sure fish eat them, but I mean, there's so many of them out here. Like, there's there's no no real like major predators to to keep their population like fully in check. There's very few native amphipod species here compared, or in numbers wise, you know, the, the native amphipod species can't compete with these introduced ones, where there's something about the, these guys' biology that just, you know, or something about the ecology that they live in that just favors their existence here. Yeah, I think they're here to stay. I don't think there's any way of getting rid of these. They're here to stay. So they are the new ecology here. But yeah, Gammarus diberi. Also commonly known as scuds. Learn something. Oh, 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 I think. Oh, no, 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 never mind. Whew. Thought I got bit. Oh, I did get bit. I did get bit. I did get bit. I did get bit. I think it's something small, though. Oh, no. Oh. oh, yeah. There we go. You hear that? That is the sound of a pulling drag. That is what most fishermen want to feel. That is what makes the sport addictive. Ugh.
This feels like this feels like the target species what I'm looking for right now. It's a Moroni saxatilis, otherwise known as the striped bass. Oh. oh yes, it is a good one. Ooh, it's looking nice. Oh, oh, we, oh, we gotta. I gotta, I gotta be, I gotta be calm. I gotta think about this. Hold on. I gotta keep him. I gotta keep him because I know I need, I need to get my things out. He might, he might come off. He, he ain't hooked that good. We're gonna try to keep him on. Uh, it's good I invested in, in this. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't want him to shake. Don't, don't shake. Don't shake. I didn't bring a net. So, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, and the hook flew off. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, shit. Moroni saxatilis, the striped bass. Oh, my God. You know we taking this mother... Yo, that was, that was pretty fun, not gonna lie. That fight, that was pretty fun. Oh, Moroni saxatilis. Maroni Saxatillus. This might be the biggest one I ever caught, or as fishermen like to say, my personal best. All right, so so I'm gonna let y'all know right now. I am about to take this home and consume this fish. Uh, striped bass are known to um, taste very, very, very good. Um, they do have problems with mercury in them, so you shouldn't really be eating them more than like once every two months or anything like that. But I haven't eaten this thing in a long time, so I'm about to eat it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, striped bass are an introduced species here to the California Delta. Um, they were introduced from the East Coast. I think they were introduced on purpose too, to to provide as as a sport fish out here because you know East Coasters, I guess they really like their East Coast fish. So when they moved out to the West Coast, they brought them along with them. It's a Uri Haline fish, um, a facultative Uri Haline fish. Uri Haline means it can go uh, in and out of different. Uh, bodies of water that vary in, in, in different salinities essentially. So these guys can be found in fresh water and salt water. As a matter of fact, they're anadromous, meaning they, uh, they often uh, swim up river into freshwater systems in order to spawn, especially in river systems. That's what they naturally do on the East Coast. And they've pretty much found uh, that they can do the same thing here with our West Coast river systems. They are very voracious predators on native fish especially salmon uh, these along with the largemouth bass uh, they do a lot of damage on on native fish populations especially salmon um persiform order all right so order persiformes um so this persiform fish they have two types of dorsal rays they got these uh front spiny hard hard rays and then these um posterior soft rays um notice that there's a distinct separation between the spiny and the soft rays uh, Persiform fish also are, are typically known to have their pe pelvic fins up close near their pectoral fins. Um, the reason for that might be uh, something involved in, in, in steering capability. Um, these fish are, are uh, pelagic swimmers. Uh, they swim around in schools, constantly moving, voracious predators, eating anything that, that comes along, just like my lure that I used. Notice it's got this, uh, this truncate tail right here. Truncate meaning it's flat. At the terminal end and that definitely aids in its type of fish movement in the way the thing moves which is a sub form type of swimming so the muscles um, it's it's relatively stiff up here but it can work its body real nice to get that boost in the water when it's trying to propel itself again persiform fish or the teleos fish so it has this protruding uh, mouth with the these three bones the premaxilla the maxilla and the dentary on one side um, articulating to create this 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 hole this tube that that can basically create a vacuum to suck in whatever it's trying to eat yeah magnificent fish no doubt um it's a survivor it's probably here to stay in the west coast too so uh yeah moroni saxatilis the striped bass get a load of that oh look at that mount diablo looking all majestic in the background Anyway, yeah, it's a good day of biologizing out here. Got myself a fish right there, Baroni Saxatellus. About to fillet that up and eat it up at home. Thank you for joining me, all five of you watching this. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you're watching this and then you're learning something about the different 
you know, forms of life that can be found in different ecosystems. And hopefully I'll be able to break out into further regions and keep doing what I'm doing. Again, I'd like to apologize for not having a camera to talk about these birds. There's so many birds out here, but it just doesn't make sense because I can't, I don't have camera equipment yet to zoom in on those things. So I apologize for that. I promise you when I get my money right, I'm gonna get some camera equipment and I'm gonna talk about these damn birds because there's hella birds out here. So you got buffle heads, ruddy ducks. I think I saw ring neck ducks. And then you got non-aquatic species like Buick wrens, red-winged blackbirds. There's a few hawks out here. Um, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of life, a lot of life in this Delta. And even though this Delta has been majorly engineered over and uh, there's major anthropogenic influence on this place, major invasion of, of introduced non-native species, this place is still productive when it comes to life, you know, super productive, you know? And uh, some of the examples that I showed you on this biologizing trip are, are just life form members that are living within this current ecology here in the California Delta. But anyway, that's it. I'm on my way back home because I got work to do cleaning up this fish and everything. So again, thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching, all five of you. Keep your decisions scientific. Stay away from all the gimmicks. I'll make a bot slice. This has been Biologizing the California Delta. Peace up, peace out. Go and learn something.